Today, we're going to design and make a custom map of my hometown, New York City, with a Glowforge laser cutter and plywood. Here's a brief overview of my process of designing the laser cut files. We'll be using a website called Snazzy Maps to create the base image. The process includes setting up a black and white map and clipping a sequence of images to create a larger map area. All of these images get stitched together in Photoshop by overlaying each section of the map onto another one, lining up the land and roads, creating a collage, and cropping the final image. Then, we bring the image into Adobe Illustrator, use the trace function to grab the outline of the land, crop everything down, and set the file up for laser cutting. If you want to go step by step and learn this entire process, you can take my course on Skillshare linked in the description section of this video for this specific project. Now, we import the file into Glowforge's online interface, adjust the settings, gather the walnut and oak plywood for the project, and start the process of laser cutting and engraving. Custom maps make great gifts, especially when they're made with materials like wood and acrylic. For all of the maps that I've made, I usually stick to two materials, which are wood and chipboard. Wood has a naturally warm color and tone that makes it work well as home decor. Chipboard comes in many colors, but white is my favorite for making maps because it's all based on the shadows created by the subtle depth created by layering the material. This project took roughly 3 hours to engrave the map and to cut all of the pieces. Large engraved projects like this take a long time because the laser needs to go back and forth across the entire surface of the plywood to create the image of New York City. If you're interested in purchasing a Glowforge for yourself, I'll share a link in the description section of this video that'll save you up to $500 off of a Glowforge Pro. When the first set of pieces were cut, I used blue masking tape to hold the pieces in place while I removed the sheet from my Glowforge. This will help me keep the pieces in the same position for gluing it onto the base. Once the other pieces were cut, I removed them from my laser cutter and placed them on my work table. I bring over my Maxi Cure Super Glue and apply it to the back of the top frame piece. Then, I flip it over and attach it to the base piece to create the frame. Next, I separate the map from the plywood sheet and flip it over to apply blue painter's tape to the back. After it's applied, I can flip the map over and remove the blue tape from the engraved side of the plywood. This will help me plan where each piece gets attached to the base. Then, I start removing the larger pieces one at a time and placing it within the frame without any glue. The idea is to figure out where every piece needs to go and make sure that they'll fit without any issues. I think of it like an easy puzzle where I already know where the pieces need to go, but the waterways won't be attached. As I was doing this with every piece, I realized that another way to create this project and streamline this process would have been to engrave the outlines of every piece onto the base. Now I turn over the piece at the top left of the frame and apply glue at the perimeter and center. I align it with the edges of the frame and press it into place. I repeat this with the remaining larger pieces until they're all glued into place. Now that the map is glued, it's time to bring over a palm sander to remove all the scorches, burns, and debris stuck on the surface of the map. I carefully sand the surface until it's clean and smooth. Next, I pour oil onto the surface of the map and use a lint-free cloth to rub it into the wood. I apply the oil finish on all of the surfaces of the map including the base that represents the waterways. Once the excess oil is wiped off, the layered map of New York City is complete. If you want to go step by step through the design process of this project, you can take my Skillshare course which I'll link in the description section of this video. If you enjoyed this project, check out my other wood crafts and consider subscribing. I'll see you again next week.